everyone. Welcome back here to Street Talk. We're at the El Capo restaurant. Trump Fridays, I have our very special guest. This is Jana Jackson. Hi, hey. Jana. Hey, hi, hi, hi. Oh my gosh, you are just a ball of energy. Jana is running for the state house in LD28. Yes, LD28. And you know what? You know, I'm running for Senate yes. in LD 24. Yes. And yes, we are yes. right next to each yes, other. We are. You know, we split yes. 40th Street. Yes, we are. We, we split 40th Street and we're very, very close. I'll tell you what, I, I we, are. <laughs> we are. I'll tell you what, I have so many friends that are just on the other side. They're like, Ray, we're so sorry we can't vote for you. And I said, but you can vote for Jana Jackson. Yes, please vote for me. Yes, yes, yes. There are two Democrats in the House right now, which means LD 28 has a blue house. And how can you have a blue house? in a red, red uh, LD. And you know what, you're right in Arcadia. You're yes. right there in the heart. That's right, right in the heart. One of the, I think it's the second largest LD district um, in the state of Arizona. I, I know in Maricopa County. Yeah. So we need to get me in. And uh, there are a lot of reasons why I need to be there. One big reason is that the house right now is blue. So people don't talk about that, but yeah. they need to. Yeah. That we are actually being governed by a blue house. So I need the votes. I need a lot of votes. Absolutely. Well, Jana, I'll tell you what, I see you out there all the time. You were talking to the people and the, you, you, know, you have a lot of things in your background that are very helpful to be in a legislative position. Yes. You're a teacher. I'm a teacher. I'm a mother. Uh, I've adopted four kids. Um, uh, I've been all over the United States uh, working for NASA as an aerospace education specialist. Uh, I have a physics, a physics and chemistry background. I've written bills at the cap state capitol in Tallahassee, Florida. So I not only did the research for senators and um, people in the House, I also wrote my own bill. So I did the research plus I wrote my own bill. So I'm very qualified. In fact, I think too qualified and too educated. But I really want to help the people because that's what this is about. It's not about me. It's about the people. And um, Martin Luther King said that if you are silent, then your life is over. You have ended your life. And our people, all people, need a voice. So I want to stand with the voice for the people. There are a lot of issues that we have here, and the only way we're going to resolve them is to take talents that God has given us and use them. Yeah. So that's one of my main reasons for running. It's for the people, it's for the children, and it's for the future. It's our future workforce. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, everybody is that is running, education is always one of the top three. Always, always. And you know what's special is you actually teach in my district. Yes, I do. <laughs> I teach in one of the lowest social economic areas in Phoenix. Um, you know, I have a foundation, I don't talk about it a lot, but I have a foundation that's called the KIDS Foundation. And that foundation, when I ran the last time as for Maricopa County Superintendent, I made a lot of promises. And the promises all stemmed about what could be done in education. So I decided to do them. So through the foundation, I was able to do all of the all of the promises that I made and at the end I found out that people run and they put education as number one agenda but when they get in they forget so being a teacher I understand what education means on a different side it's a different side from being a businessman and then or a woman and thinking about education but education is our future workforce and so when people start talking about what can we do in education if our system fails our workforce fails so my job is to make sure that our system does not fail that I can lead the way and if you have talents that are given to you by God then you respect that and you lead the way and in education we need to do that um, lots of people are talking about online instruction they talk about it but they don't realize what really happens no they don't yes they don't so yeah. for an example um, you give everyone in the school district a computer and a hotspot Spot. But what you forget is that the majority of the people that you have to give a computer and a hotspot to are living in a home that they're sharing bedrooms. There are four or five kids and there might even be two families. Well, how do you take four and five kids with four or five laptops, four or five hotspots and expect it to work? Right. So there's some things that we don't think through. You can't do that unless you put a time system where everyone can work towards it. So then you look at spending. Right. So my taxes just paid for five computers 
computers and five hotspots that our kids can't use. And why can't they use it? Can't use the server because they're all on the hotspot, they're all on their laptops at the same time. So these are issues that we need to think through before we actually do them. Well, you know, it, it seems to me that every time they talk about this, they just want to throw more money. Oh, let's just give it more money. All it needs is more money. But you know what? It's not. We need people like you in office that have the experience, that are teachers, that you have the ideas, you have the solutions that many of the other legislatures would never, ever know about. But I also need the support of people like you. See, when you get into the House, it's not about you. You're just one person. And it's like um, you have said, if we don't join together as a team, if we don't come together in a leadership, then we're individuals. And if you are individuals, you're not as powerful as a team. And people don't know who's on their team. Right. So when you talk about who's running and how we want to make a difference, we don't go to the state house and make a difference the day we get in. Right. We make a difference together as we run together, as we walk together. And that's what we need to do. You spoke right. about the yeah. unity. And yeah. I'm agreeing with what you said. Yeah. If our districts are right across the street from each other, then we need to know that. And we need to support each other as we're walking and knocking on doors. Yeah, you know, I see this all the time. You know, I have a great friend. She's an LD18. I think I told you about it. I've known her. We went through kindergarten, grade school, and high school together. I've known her my entire life. She's running an LD18. Suzanne Shearer, I know you yes. know Suzanne. Yes. And we all have to get together. We as Republicans, yes. we who are, are striving for freedom and liberty yes. and individualism, we need right. to get together, come together, work together, and yes. make Arizona better. We have to do that. And people that have leadership abilities, we give ourselves through God. See, we didn't come with these abilities. Right. We did not establish these abilities. It was actually made for us. So God placed these abilities right. for us to walk on a path. I didn't walk the path. I, as a Republican, have always been a Republican from, the, from junior college. Wow. But I hid in the closet. Wow. And the reason why I hid in the closet is because it was hard for me to come out to say, I believe in the Constitution. I believe that my gun that is in my house will stay in my house. Nobody's going to come in and take it. Right. I believe that the church that I belong to, they, it's, it's written. You do not close the doors. Mm -hmm. Doors, pastors right. say this, doors are always open. Right. They're open for everyone to walk in. Well, what right. happens when you close those doors? That's not what we do here in, in the United States. We right. leave our church doors open. We talk about small businesses. The only way that we will make it is to keep our small businesses um, open. And wearing a mask, there was a polio. Now, I don't really remember polio, but I have the scars of the smallpox and polio shot. Right. Everybody, there was a time when kids were, were becoming deformed and dying of polio and adults. And people were wearing these masks. And then all of a sudden, people got together and said, we're going to stamp out polio. And you know, they not only stamped it out in the United States, they stamped out polio in the world. Yeah. So we have to look at the, at the virus as this is our step to go forward. We're being pushed forward. But we don't have to shield ourselves, just like polio. Yeah. Polio was one of the most dangerous viruses in the United States, far more than, far more so than now. Yeah. And when we talk about Black Lives Matter, you don't want to get me on that subject. <laughs> when I think about the Weathermen and the Black Panthers, and if you look them up, research, you'll find out that the same principles as the Weathermen and the Black Panthers is the same principles that is following with Black Lives Matter. And when you talk about Black Lives Matter, you have to realize I'm from Chicago. My brother-in-law was shot on the street and died getting cake. His daughter was shot in the head when she was coming out of uh, University of Chicago Hospital, uh, University of Chicago Hospital where she is a nurse practitioner. My sister-in-law was abused, put into a trunk, and killed. So when you talk about Black Lives Matter, every life of black is affected. Therefore, black lives must not matter. It's not about black, it's about people. And the only way we stomp these things out is to work together as a family, work together as legislators, come together and say, we are going to do it. Well, I'll tell you what, I look forward to being in the legislature with you because I know you're going to be elected. If you are in LD28, LD28. right? 28, you have 
you have to. There's no excuse. You got to support Jana Jackson. She's right there. She's out there talking to everybody. So uh, it's going to be fun. Okay. We're going to have a great time. It's yes, going to be a great 2020. Yes, it is. And we're, we're going to be in there. And we're going to make we're going to make things happen together. Yes, we will. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, talk. Oh, Thank oh well. Thank you, Ron for allowing me this opportunity. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, Ron, Uncle Ronnie is a great guy. You know what? We should have you on the radio sh radio program. Yes, we should. Radio yeah, program. that'd be awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us here at Street Talk because we're at El Capo Restaurant every Friday. We're right here uh, just about on the corner of Shea and Scottsdale Road, just a little bit east of Scottsdale Road. We can see the Harkins Theaters from here. So thank you for joining us on behalf of Jana Jackson and Ray Michaels, myself. Until next time, we'll see you real soon.